I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have no vice chair. We no have no vice vice chair. <laughs> Oh, guess I'll do it. Yeah, have to do it. <laughs> um, just remember, public input. We'll have one session now and one session at the end. Um, public input is reserved for noble residents, primarily. Um, please try to keep your comments to three minutes. And remember, we cannot discuss personnel issues um, at a board meeting. So that being said, do we have any public input? <laughs> okay, oh. moving on then. Minutes of the May 2nd meeting. I never saw that. I was like, was there? It says it came in And there was a Mr. Potter on it when I read it, and I fixed that. <laughs> I <laughs> caught it. <laughs> I like how they did the orange. When they oh, yeah. put it down. So. Anybody have any additions, corrections to the minutes? None? Okay, somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of. How was that? May. Second. Oh, right. Yep. Okay. We have a second. I'll second that. All in favor of accepting the May second minutes? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're losing. Okay. Thank you. Six zero, oh, and then we're missing three. Yep. Okay. That's a celebration point, you know. Huh. I like that. No, no changes. To I, the know. I know. I know. That's good. That's good for me. <laughs> Okay, uh, going back to, after that we have, you yeah. get back there. Wait a minute. Okay. I'm just, Which way is it going? Huh? Which way is that going? Uh, I don't know. It's <laughs> very, okay. very large this time. Student report is next. Hi. Good evening. Okay. Um, so, I'll just I'll make this short. Okay. So we have um, AP testing this week. Um, it's, it's as fun as AP testing can be. So <laughs> there's really not much to say on that. Um, the uh, sports season are wrapping up. Um, <laughs> there. Uh, so the, some teams that are doing. Uh, quite well are boys uh, baseball um, which is five um, five wins five losses um, girls lacrosse is four to five girls softball is nine to two and um, overall track has won most of their meets um, this past one um, we both teams uh, girls and guys won by about 30 points each which is pretty good um, the senior graduation red carpet week begins Friday, June seventh, and the graduation is uh, the fourteenth, a week later. Um, and student body elections will be around that same time. Uh, we haven't we haven't booked a auditorium slot, or we don't have a firm date yet. Um, but those are coming up real fast. Um, and then just some smaller things. There's a band field trip on the 31st to Canopy Lake Park where they will perform. Um, and there's a Latin dinner night. I've said before that is on the 21st or the 31st. Um, on the 24th, the cultural fair at the North Berwick Elementary School. Uh, will by the French and Spanish Honor Societies uh, will entertain about 500 people 
uh, at a minimum for the day. Um, so that will be uh, that'll be great. With a lot of people, more than we thought, uh, but um, that's going to be fun for all the kids and all of their families, which are also invited. Um, the Community Citizens Night, which is tomorrow night, um, that's what I meant, Saturday night. Um, did, did it go away? It's fine. Okay. Um, I uh, just have some of the awards. Well, two of the awards are Citizen of the Year, you know, just kind of general things and awards to students, uh, Boy Scouts, everything you can think of. Um, and uh, one in particular that my grandfather is receiving is the Boston Cane Award, um, the eldermost citizen of Perwick, which is pretty awesome, and a bunch of other stuff like that. No, What's that? 90s, How old is he? 96. Yeah. <laughs> it would count, yes. Um, so that's all I have for today. Um, one other thing, do you want to talk a little bit about the leadership? Main leadership, youth leadership? Yeah. Or wait until after? Just maybe the two of you are going to it. I feel like now I have to talk about it. <laughs> okay, so um, there is a four-day leadership excursion to Gorham, so it's not really an excursion. Um, and I, I am one of the people going with Cami Rose. It's just for sophomores. Um, I don't know that much about it, but we do volunteer work, and there's a talent show, and a graduation ceremony, and from what I can tell, it's a pretty life-changing experience. And uh, I'm very excited to be a part of it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's what you want. You mentioned that the uh, softball team was 92. Yes. They had a game against Scarborough. Now, Scarborough was, it's like 91 and 0. Yeah, in they're, the season. they're I mean, pretty they're serious. good. Yeah. Get, like, I think that's the exact number. And uh, we lost to them 5 to nothing, but it was like a two to nothing ball game going into a late inning. So huh. it wasn't really a five run game. It didn't feel like that. But their pitcher struck out 16 of our batters. So we would get the bat on the ball. Then the, uh, so then the next game that they had with Thornton Academy, it was like, okay, well, you know what? Thornton's a good team. That's gonna be a, another good trial, but, but uh, we, we can play with Scarborough now, so we're ready. I think the final was, we lost that one 13 to five or something. There were four home runs hit in the game against them. Jeez. It was just, I think they might have looked past a little, said, yeah, good team, but we're a better team. And then, who, who? Good was lessons. Right here at Noble, too. So yeah. that was a tough night. Yeah. Track went up against Scarborough on our first meet, which was a little terrifying considering we had had basically no practice time. But um, it, it, we did fairly well. I think one of us won. I forget which boys or girls. but um. Yeah, so it was an exciting yeah, so I think that was the girls. Yeah, I can check. Outdoor that won that one. Not sure. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, math curriculum next. Okay, so based on the presentations that you heard uh, from Heidi Gurley Percy and a couple of teacher representatives who were here to provide some background information as well. Um, what we talked about at the last meeting was that I would bring forward two proposals. Proposal for adoption of the Eureka Math at grades K-5 and the adoption of illustrative math in grades 6-8. I was really impressed with the thoroughness of their presentation. It, it, they really had done their homework and a lot of time on that. Steps taken. Yeah open invitations for all grades to participate in visiting other schools, um, doing some pilot work, uh, having opportunities to meet and talk with uh, other, other teachers from other school systems, as well as representatives of these programs. But I like personally to talk with other people who, who are actually doing something, mm -hmm. tell you where the bumps are. So because I vaguely remember this, that both of these 
um, would be the same monetary value of what had been budgeted. Yes. So yeah, it does not be, change the okay. budget value. Uh, the, the Eureka math is um, largely uh, running off paper copies, right. and we built that in. Yep. And then there are a couple of additional things. That you, it's, it's open education resource, so that's free. But there are a couple of extra resources that you can purchase that help to supplement, and we're looking at those now, but it wouldn't, ex it wouldn't exceed the budget okay. plan. Okay. So do we need someone yes. to do a motion? Do you want to put them together, or can we do them or separately? Whatever the pleasure of the board is. I will make a motion to approve the adoption of Eureka Math, grades K through five, and illus illustrative math, grades six through eight. I'll second that. Okay, all those uh, in favor? That would be six, Was there right? discussion? No, I just wanted to. Oh, also, sorry. Sorry. I, 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 um, I just wanted to uh, sort of agree with Becky's comment that uh, the presentation was excellent, and um, it's sometimes tempting, I think, to present all the good data. And um, I thought she did a really good job of showing all sides of it and the whole end to end, where the progress was, where the challenges were, and I think it made it a lot easier to make a decision. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If the data is great, that's always fun to present. Yeah. If the data is flat, that's not as fun to present, but it's where we are. So. Okay. Any other further discussion? All right. All those in favor, we'll do this again. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Right. Six off. All right. So, Becky made the motion, made right and yeah. Lynn took yeah. yeah. right. <coughs> All right, number seven, potential board retreat. So just a question for folks. Um, it's, it's at the uh, pleasure of the board. If you, if you A, feel the need, and B, can actually find the time to pull such diverse schedules together for people because the retreat is, they do take place usually on a day like from nine o'clock in the morning till three thirty in the afternoon, that would be a pretty typical stretch. Uh, How many new board members are we going to have? Somebody replacing Dustin. Dustin. Okay, you, you're running. You have. You put your. Yes, I am. But as my husband said, if I lose this, I'm really something wrong with me. If you are running <laughs> So it might be unanimous. Way to keep it real. <laughs> so who I, else is um, Rebecca? Was the other one? She's running. Rebecca. She was. She was. She was she's, she's, she's she's in, yeah. Oh, so they've she already, they've had, already had, had, had there. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just be Dustin's. Yep. And I don't think anyone's. Running. Is anybody running against him? Last I. Checked, I didn't think he's not running. running the, nobody's running. Place. So we're gonna nobody's have running. Yeah. Nobody's running. Nope. The last I asked him. Maureen. <laughs> hey! <laughs> You're right. Anyway, she can do a roll. So it's good. I think it's important. I I think it's always good if we get together and have a day together. We can talk about things. I know it was hard. It's hard, but I think we should. It's hard to um, make everyone's. Uh, Is it schedule completely out of the question to do a weekend and not a weekday? I'm I'm. Uh, doesn't I'm listening to folks here. We did a weekend. I think we'd have to do it at Tobago, but uh, <laughs> that sounds worse. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, what do people feel? Um, so, if I could just take a little sweep around with people, just to see, yeah. Becky, would you be? Would you have availability to do? Uh, what are the odds you'd have availability to do a one-day retreat this summer in, in July, likely? It's possible as long as it's before the 20th. Okay, and then the date piece is we have to look. I can't do it look. before the 20th. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, always, I think this is what happened last it was year. Right. Yeah, well, I like we I said, the first week in August, right but... Before, uh, Okay. Well, Before what right. date did you say? The twentieth. The twentieth. Um, oh. Could we do it like maybe on the eighteenth when we have a board meeting anyway? 
That's what we did uh, look to try to do last year was to schedule and, and actually what was it four years ago when we had our last one right. that we had it on the day of the board meeting and we moved the board meeting right. up earlier and had it after that like half an hour break and then had a board meeting. Three, three, four o'clock or something. Yeah. But you you're not gonna be around on the eighteenth. I'm planning to come back from vacation so I can be here for the meeting on the 18th. So oh. if we did it that day, I could oh. be there. And I could do the 18th. I could too. You could too? Mm -hmm. sure. I can. You, you I can. 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 Yes, can. she can. Yeah. Oh my goodness. No, don't don't say anything. Don't say anything. You know what though? We're never we may not get everybody in the room. So let's no. take the majority and like no. Yeah, and pick a date. And then maybe people can rearrange the schedules if they have to. It's a work related thing. So if we I, mean, I would say it's not a whole lot different than other days. Um, don't I would if it's a majority for everyone else, go ahead and schedule it and I may be able to do half of it. I have a bunch of travel and vacation around then so mm -hmm. taking another day might be challenging yeah. but I might be able to I might Instead be able to do half of it. Instead of being a nine to three or would it be something like we did a noon to and put the board meeting like did a noon to six and then threw the board meeting in that you could get here later maybe for a couple hours to meet? Yeah that, that, I mean, that, that would work probably, that would work better for me. Great yeah. So a noon to Noon to, noon to nine? Noon to work it into the <laughs> noon to nine. Okay. Noon to, noon to like five or whatever. Okay. We start no, I'm just kidding. Six. Yeah. Yes. Done by eight. Perfect. Okay. Like so, actually. yeah, noon to five. Uh, we'll, we'll have some food brought in and then um, start the meeting at six. Do you I want your How to Be a Terrible School Board Member book back? No, I think you need to keep that and use it as a reference. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we're talking 12 about. 12 to five. July 18th. And then um, a uh, light supper and then a 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. board meeting. Five. I'll send out an invitation. Board meeting at 6, is that your saying? Yes. Great. Thank you, folks. Okay. All right. Um, if you have, uh, just on that same topic, if oh. people have items that you wish to have some Either if there's a presentation that you would like me to arrange through any of the legal councils if or, or through a main school board association if you have specific topics, if there's something that you would like to have on the agenda to work through as a group, please provide that in information to me hopefully no later than like the last day of school so that I got a month to get those people arranged or things arranged. Um, what about a legislative review of what's going on in Augusta education-wise? Yeah. That would probably be a good time to have one because the session will have ended and we'll see what bills actually happened. Okay. Um, and then <coughs> it might be good to start thinking about advocacy for the coming session so that you get a little bit ahead of the game and have a little little bit of a say or some with our local representatives to try to influence some decisions. I was reading the Maine School Board Association newsletter and it looked like there's a whole slew of education issues that they're bringing up. Some of which are good and others are well, not so good. There are 28 that are um, on the there are some that are not, not past status, and then there are some others that have already been dealt with. There are 28 that I'm aware of that have not been dealt with. We're in, we're in May. And is somebody so watching? They're going to have to carry, carry <coughs> forward. Is somebody watching out for unfunded mandates? Um, yes and no. Um, there's there's an, an organization for school support and. And I think that there's too much of a neutral stance there because, well, maybe that'll work in southern Maine, but it won't work in northern Maine, or it'll be difficult for this district, but the other 92 districts can do it. And so there are, there are neutral stances taken. 
-hmm. So I've been talking with the York County Superintendents Association about um, reopening our discussions to consider hiring a lobbyist in each district pays a small fee towards that person that who would question. keep us informed. Um, the MSMA began a, a resolutions committee, an ad hoc committee two years ago in response to our work in York County on looking into lobbyists. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll serve on that for York County. And um, it's been very little action. Um, there was, I was in a meeting at York County Soups and the paper was passed out by our executive board representative to the group this year. And she's asking me, she's another superintendent in the county, and she's asking me, are these the resolutions your group put forward? I said, no, I, I've never seen this. She said, I, I said, no, I'd seen it. And I thought she, her group had put those forward. Neither the executive committee nor the resolutions committee had one thing to do with any of the 11 items. And there were already, these are the bills we're promoting, these are the sponsors that we have lined up for them. And, so we, we had no input to it so whatsoever. So you don't know who did it? Yes, we do. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not advantageous for, for um, some, several districts in, in this part of Maine. So we're going to see if we can do something more advantageous without trying to be divisive, just trying to have, have a say. Okay, so any other ideas people have, they should let you know by the end of school for special things you want for the retreat. Yes. Has there been anything on the pre-K angle? Uh, there's still funding available for that, and it's not going to be mandatory according to um, Commissioner Macon. And it's not going to be next year, it's not going to be the next few years so um, there has to be space and there has to be you can't make it you can't put that financial impact on the school districts mm -hmm. offset it for two years and then remove that funding because that's that's an incredible increase yeah, yeah. so there's, there's got to be a, a longer term solution to it before we can consider it. It's a lot to, lot to think about, a lot of factors. Yeah. Okay, we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Financial summary. Uh, that went out electronically to folks. I'll just do a mm -hmm. quick recap of that. So, State subsidy, there's 23% remaining to be collected, uh, about 4.66 million. Uh, local tax revenue, 4.78 million to be collected. Uh, total balance of revenues to be collected this year is, and there's an, also an other category, would be about 9.57 million. The expense category, um, career and technical education is the weird looking number there. I talk about it each time. Remember, Chef Kucher's no longer here, so we never did uh, expend the, those funds. Um, the other instruction, you can see the term summer school in there, and a lot of the, like the kindergarten jumpstart and so forth, that's why there's 21% remaining in that category. Uh, same thing with uh, the other expenses, is 21% there, because, and in, was it transportation? No, maintenance expenses, because those are projects that are gonna come up once the, schools are empty and they can get in and do some of the work and the other expenses about food service and serving summer programs and uh, the tritown bookmobile so all the other accounts are are very typical for this time of the year do you have any sense yet about projects that we can get done that maybe we didn't think we could so we've got uh, slightly under $200,000 on the docket 
right now, and we don't have uh, for beginning July 1st, mm -hmm. that's not a lot. That's that's very very small amount to work with, and then we don't have any fund balance. It, I don't believe it's going to be terribly likely that we're going to have fund balance um, by after June 1st that we can say we can anticipate that these will be funds that we can apply to get some more roofing done or some more paving or something like that or one time other one time only projects. So I don't believe so. I think we do need to revisit the uh, capital outlay instead of what do we have left over right. and see if we can get this done because it, it's too it's too reliant on on the fund balance mm -hmm. uh, the same thing is true with our large equipment inventory we've got we st we got 96 pieces five thousand dollars to twenty five thousand dollars a piece and we can't be on a plan that says we have a contingency of twenty five thousand dollars that's that's a 96 year plan mm -hmm. Um, you going to do that one? I'll do it. All right. So you do the 96 year plan. <laughs> so we, we, need to be, we need to be looking at, at something like a capital outlay plan is what I'll recommend in the future. Any other financial questions? Okay. Policy. First reading. Revisit first reading. Yes, so um, <clears throat> we didn't get a lot of time with policy this year. We started the budget process um, quite a bit earlier this year. Uh, it's like forever. In, mm -hmm. it's like forever. <laughs> anticipating uh, some of the things that we knew we were going to be facing in this year's budget, trying to the. the, the fund balance hole and things like that and uh, looking at the bulge that's going through the district uh, that's coming into the high school fairly shortly so uh, the, in the need for social emotional kinds of programming social workers guidance counselors behavior interventionists um, I was just talking with a candidate who for a position who is in uh, she, she works in the county right now and she was saying well we've just recently hired and she was saying we, we've got a half time gu guidance counselor coming in we have a behavior therapist we have a we're doing this she said we're doing the second step program starting next year that's why you're bringing all those things in well there's been a significant change in the uh, behaviors and in, in, uh, in the parents in the homes be, have it, being able to do coping strategies to manage their own situations, let alone now you've got to look at it from you also have somebody who's dependent on you for the same thing. And uh, substance abuse came into into the discussion. So we're in the southern part of the state, and I just heard that from the northern part of the state today. Not new. So these, um, so the so we're uh, there's only one here that is that has not appeared on our list before as a first read, and that's limited, limited open closed form, and then under oops, I'm sorry, there's a typo in revisit. Uh, it says revisit first reading. So we had from uh, we we left some things that we had attempted to get to earlier this year, and, and they're not uh, they're not voluminous. Policies that are going to take an unbelievable. They're they're small checklists that we can update. That's not going to be difficult work, but we need to get to these. And then the the, the other one that had already been presented um, might have been either May second or the the April meeting that we had before the hall uh, before the vacation. That was about um, service animals, pets, uh, service animals in school, and animals in school. So those will be the ones that will go forward. Hopefully we'll get a chance to meet um, prior to June 6th and we can get some work taken care of on that and get these taken, taken off the list. And that would leave us with, I think I counted maybe seven policies left that were older than 2009. So we'd be within that 10-year window, which is, 
I'm going to celebrate on that one. Yeah. Good job. What about you, Joe? We'll have a policy party. <laughs> oh, very nice. Alliterative quality. You know how to have a good time. <laughs> so, uh, just in a quick read of those, there's Title I parent involvement. That's a required policy. Uh, Sue takes lead on that if she's the Title I guruess. Um, ad advertising in schools visitors to the schools, relations with law enforcement authorities, and related policy relations with school resource officers and law enforcement authorities. Seems a little redundant. And then KLG, KLGR, the procedure, is about resource officers and law enforcement administration in the schools. Very timely for us to be looking at those. Yep. <laughs> employment, new hires, retirement, resignations. We have a long list. Okay, so what I would ask, and that is your will, Ms. Chairperson, what I would ask to do is to be able to give a brief one minute recap. We, we've done all the hard legwork. We, we take this very seriously, obviously, because we're looking at our view is, are the people that we're hiring the answer to the million dollar question? We know we're committing over a lifetime more than a million dollars to an employee. Um, so we, we want to make sure that we're doing the, the really hard work to, to get the best candidates possible. So um, would it be all right with you if we just said like a one minute recap of people? And, and then you mean on each person? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then just took them as a group. <laughs> I think she liked it to be 30 yeah. seconds. Okay. Okay. That's right. 15 yes. of them on here. Though. Yes, okay, so that's fine. Why don't we get 30 <laughs> seconds? You got a quick thing to say on this person? Uh, I did not interview this person. Oh, you, okay, I'll start with this one. Yeah, Will so, you just double I mean, check that okay. one? All right, so anticipated uh, for the uh, physical and life science teacher at the high school, we have a, a, a gentleman by the name of James Sutter, whom I interviewed. He's in uh, Summersworth, New Hampshire. High school is very excited about him, master in teaching for education, science, and uh, advanced certification from the University of Akron. Then we have uh, Elizabeth Mitro, who is currently working here this year. She was a long-term sub for a teacher in the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. I just drew a blank eighth on grade, that. Actually. Eighth grade, grade was Terry, yeah. yes. Uh, she would be, and then she's been um, subbing in the ninth grade as well. Uh, Elizabeth would continue in the ninth grade role as a ninth grade math teacher, so we're very familiar with her already. Okay, so Tim Jones is actually a currently a teacher at the Morrison School in Rochester <coughs> for us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. Uh, actually, he's at the Morrison, Morrison. School in Scarborough. We have. Um, He's actually a teacher of the deaf, and we are being able to bring him to us with a student so that we will be able to bring another district placement back. And uh, Tim's got a lot of good experience and um, is very excited to join our team. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to move him from just a specific student to a larger program. That's great. Um, the, the, that's like three good steps all together. Yeah, yeah, uh, Paula LaRue is a person that joined us a year ago from York. <clears throat> and she, uh, at the last meeting, um, I provided her retirement information and the board accepted it. And Paula has said, what did I do? <laughs> she would like to, she would like to be accepted. She hadn't been to the to, State Retirement. To, uh, uh, well, she'd like to um, be re-employed. Yeah. And it's not, uh, you know, some kind of, uh, is that because somebody wanted to get retirement? Because so, you couldn't do that within... You have to be 30 days, no contact, and so forth. Uh, choral music educator in place of the fabulous Rebecca Dewan. I spoke with Drew Albert, who has some contact, a guy named Stan, what was his last name, Cowan, uh, <laughs> because he's at Miranda Cook. He does everything at Miranda Cook. He is the music teacher, the, the choral, the band teacher. He is the, he teaches electives. He builds courses. He's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And he is, his uh, piano skills are, are, that's one of the newer instruments for him, so he's at the uh, moderate level with that. He is an outstanding, I've seen him play on, uh, uh, on a group that he's with, um, the Galley Rats, if you ever want to check it out. 
So plug for the gallery reps. But uh, Drew seemed like a just a great young guy, tons of energy, will be a good replacement. Sloan Sorrell um, is known probably to most people on the board. Uh, Sloan's a former student and she is also a person who's been working as a clerk here. She's worked as an ed tech. She's been at the M uh, Mary Hurd Academy and we're looking to hire her as an MHA teacher. Perfect, perfect slide in. And she fits in with Spencer and with Andrew because she's they're six tall. five and she's six two. Oh. So you know we just keep that. Uh, and when we had Ben Ben Francisco, he was six five. So it was a it was a normal size group. Yeah, we we did we did hire a smaller guy though. I enjoyed it. Yes. <laughs> it's always uh, good to have tall people in those kind of situations. I've never heard sometimes. No. Uh, seventh grade science teacher Emma Toth. I interviewed her. She's from Sandown, New Hampshire, has her master's in science. She's currently been working at Leonard Middle School in Old Town, which is one of the schools. That it's, it's been a blue ribbon school uh, in, in the recent past. Um, and her, her background in science will be a nice addition. We did a lot of geek talk during the interview. Uh, Hannah Sorois, not related to the other Sorois families that we, that we know, Norman, Norman Company. She uh, lives in, she lives in, uh, well, she's in Idaho right now. So we did a, a Skype kind of interview and uh, she's at a uh, natural, she's earning her, completing her natural resources certification in environment, environmental education and science communication um, at the University of Idaho. And uh, it was actually in the cabin where I was interview, interviewing her from my office, it's crazy. And she has uh, her, besides her master's or bachelor's, was at UMO, and she uh, is, uh, is thrilled for the opportunity to work at the school that she has heard so much about. Um, do you want to check that one out? Because that was a Susan piece. Mm -hmm. This one, I met him with you, I yeah, believe. So Christopher Chris Sococo is going to be joining us at MHA as well as a special education teacher. And um, he actually looks like a twin brother of one of the guys that works for Robert. It's really funny. But he is shorter than the other boy. Yeah. So, um, anyways, Chris is, um, has a, actually has a, um, a background in the Marines. And he is looking to bring some. He's been working at Thornton Academy for the past um, year. And he's, before that, he was a behavioral health professional. So he's got some good experience. Mm -hmm. board. And then I, Brooke Dunphy is going to be joining us as a school psychologist. Um, she's got, she's went was at University of Southern Maine, UNH, um, Wakes University for her BA, so she's got her Certificate of Advanced Study through everything, and she is, um, she's from Wells, so a close, a close one over, and um, she actually, I believe, worked for us a few years ago. I was going to say, she's been here before, that. and she's an experienced <laughs> educator. Exactly, yep. right, exactly, so, you, so we're, we welcome Brooke back. Um, and then speaking of Brooke, uh, Brooke Valencia as a behavior intervention specialist from North Berwick Elementary School. Um, she happens to live right around the corner from the school. Uh, she attended some school, it's highly touted, what's uh, St. Joseph's College and uh, her major in special education. Um, we talked a lot of school shop. Uh, she's also been working in a day treatment program in the Portland Public Schools which I have a lot of contacts still in Portland, and I had great, great feedback about her. Dana Secundi is a first grade teacher candidate for North Berwick Elementary School. Um, she lives out on Deer Wanda Road in Hollis. I drive by it every day, twice a day. And there were four deer crossing the street last night right near it, and I said, I got it. I don't have to ask how they named that place. Dead serious. Um, she has been working in a Title I school with uh, extremely diverse needs, created a school within a school model, vertical teaming and so forth. Lucy Calkins writing, I mean, she's just loaded with great experience. She comes from uh, Massabesic where I talked with Larry Malone and with a former curriculum coordinator there who both said she is absolutely one of our finest teachers in Massabesic and this is going to be a, a big loss for us. Um, and then he thanked me. Uh, for calling. <laughs> hey, Larry. Uh, Allison Abbott would be our candidate for kindergarten teacher full time at Hanson Elementary School. She lives all the way away in Kennebunk. 
Um, she is uh, her. This is one of my favorite interviews this summer, uh, this season, our hiring season. She is just the, the teacher talk that she used in the meeting with me to explain her management systems and uh, how she relates to students and stuff. I just said, I just told her, I said, we're going to love you. We're just gonna, this is going to be great. So she has her uh, master's from Lesley University in elementary education and specialist teacher of reading. And her, uh, she was at UConn um, for her bachelor's of science, human development, and family studies. How are we doing? Good. All right. Almost there. Ashley Ridlin, there's some kind of, I, I think we had to look up the nepotism policy for this because, or the family relations. Uh, Jane Perkins is her mom, and, which makes Dave Perkins her brother. It's like, holy cow, here we go again. She lives out on Prospect Hill. I said, good, I can call you in the morning, see how the snow is up there. <laughs> um, she would be a half-time kindergarten teacher for us in, uh, in, in, at Hanson, and she's thrilled for the opportunity She's still involved in the PTO. She's been, uh, she's the president of that and been involved in other aspects. Taught junior achievement in the schools, got into there, became a sub, said, hey, this is awesome stuff. I love this. Uh, and, and while she's got, still has young kids at home, this half time would be a perfect fit for her. And she's uh, been involved in the ETEP program at um, USM, highly touted uh, master's program. Uh, for a first grade at Vivian E. Hussey School, a young lady by the name of Liana Andrade, Andrade, excuse me. <clears throat> she lives in Saco. She's been working in our district for uh, long-term subs. I think she was in for Dana Landry and then maybe even for Nikki Dawes. Oh, she's doing Nikki right now. <clears throat> so she's, we're, we're already very familiar with her, has her master's degree. This whole group was boring. Everybody was no, 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 no on the criminal history records things. Is that what you want? <laughs> Never. I mean, let's have a little bit of. Yeah, yeah. Um, she uh, had her master's in, in education at uh, Merrimack, and then she was Bridgewater State University for her bachelor's in English and psychology, and she's been the, the long-term sub. For us now, uh, two different times, and is she's she's ready to go. So, did I miss any? Did we miss anybody on our so. list? That's mm -hmm. the group. So we want a motion for all of those at once. Yes, that would be great. Okay. I move we vote on all of it at once. <laughs> I'll second it. Any further discussion? I did appreciate the little overview because. It is nice to know where they are coming from and yeah. why they're choosing to uh, come to Noble. Did, did you second it? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? Six and Six and I'd just like to say that this we have had such a rich pool this yeah, time around, great. and part of that's been because of the scheduling of the board, the accidental schedule of the board meetings. You have to notify probationary teachers by May 15th, which meant names would come forward on the 2nd because the next meeting is until the 16th. So we're two weeks ahead in our usual window for that, and we are just in prime season. I thought you were going to say that we had something to do with the good candidate pool. Well, they all you did, they you did, be because here. you said, yeah. let's put this on the 16th. The online. <laughs> Should I really make note of that for future and try to I think what we'll do is, in the future, we'll just make sure that the, the, the first meeting in May will be the time that we'll put that out. We know what the deadline is. It just, it makes for some awkward situations sometimes. If it's in a business and, and People are going to go in different directions. It just happens. If it's in schools and you have 40, 40, you know, 30, 40 days left, it's a, it's a really weird thing. 2023 20, to be exact. <laughs> so, <from laughs> May, from May there. Okay. All right. Retirement. retirement? Yes. Um, if you take your left hand and grab the side of the seat and your right hand and grab the other side, I'd like to share that a person by the name of Diane Myers. Oh, and, oh I'm going to get a no from you. Um, Diane 
says, Good morning, Mr. Connolly. I am writing to let you know that I have decided to retire from teaching at the end of the 18-19 school year. I came to Noble in the fall of 1980 and have enjoyed supporting students and working with our wonderful staff and administrators ever since. I met with Joe and Allie early this morning to, to inform them of my decision. I'll, I'll be sure to do exit interviews with a lot of folks, not just retirees, but also with some of our uh, resignees. And uh, this will be one I'm not going to enjoy doing. Um, you go in, <laughs> it's, it, she cracks me up. You go in that room, and she's saying, "Okay, my little cherubs, now come on." And, and every every kid, I don't care face. how big he is, they're all with her. They're all. It's just amazing. It's amazing. That's an icon um, for us, Mike, right there. So yeah, I mean that's impressive. Good for her. Well deserved. Successful good? year after year after year. There's a lot of students that will remember Miss Myers mm -hmm. for a lot of years. Is that 39 years? Yeah, yeah. that's 39. Yes. Yeah. In the Talk district. About stamina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay, the other one that I would need a, a approval of these two is from Renee Gentile, formerly Renee Winkler. Renee used to teach at North Berwick Elementary. She got married, moved to Massachusetts. It wasn't the same for her there. Um, she couldn't wait to hopefully get back. She joined us uh, as Renee Gentile a year ago at one year, yeah, at um, Hussey Elementary, and uh, she's a former York kid. Um, her her whole educational career and so forth, and she lives right close by there. And she decided that. Married life and possible next steps and so forth. That this would be a, a smart thing for her to do. So she says, please uh, accept this formal notification of her resignation. Grade two, Vivian Huzzy. She thanks her colleagues and in, in the district for the past six years, five out of the six, anyways, and uh, greatly enjoyed and appreciated the opportunities to grow as a teacher while being fortunate enough to learn and work with great colleagues. So I would need a motion on those two. Okay. Want to make a motion. I'll make a motion to accept those resignations. Second. Second. Let's do it a second. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Thank you. So the ed the other three, uh, so we don't three need people to. I have, uh, Carol Dwyron, uh, uh, they're in different contract groups or, or, or agreement groups, so I don't need to have um, those uh, accepted okay. by the board. Um, after 34 years of working in the district, boy, there's how many between the two? Uh, I have decided to retire at the end of this school year. This is Carol Dwyron from the middle school. Most of the time I've worked with special needs children and have truly enjoyed that work at the age of blank. I need some time for relax. <laughs> See, Carol, I'm not sharing that. <laughs> I just, how am I doing, Joanne? Great. <laughs> uh, to relax and enjoy myself. I've also enjoyed working with all the teachers that I've come in contact with over the years. Thank you much for the opportunity. Um, Kenny, oh, I can't read his last name. It's Hill, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, Kenny Hill, Mr. Blank. As of June 30th, 2019, Kenny wishes, said he wishes to retire uh, from his custodial position where he doesn't say how long he's been employed been here, with, but he's been here. He's actually, I think I've stepped down a little bit earlier. Okay. okay. And if I combine the three of these, I'm just going to say we're over 100 right there. I'm oh, dead serious. That's all. Probably what? collectively. Years. 39. Oh, 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 39. Gotcha, 30, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, okay. really. Uh, Al Poor. Speaking of Stan Cowan, that's his brother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is Stan Knight. Hi, Stan. Uh, watching us too. Yeah, <laughs> okay, Wendy's watching for him. Uh, I know it, it, she. He sends a note to uh, on a communication that he had with Sue last year. She, he says, "I know I had spoken with you verbally at the end of the last school year about my possibility of retiring." at the close of the 1819 school year. This is my formal declaration to you that here I am. I'm retiring at the close of this year. Thanks much for the for the fun. So those three <laughs> are just shifts. Okay. Is that it? Is yes, it is. Other is next. 
I have a, just a quick other, um, a, a brief story that I just read earlier today um, that it was from the Wall Street Journal um, and it, it is sort of just evolving, but apparently the college board that does the SATs is going to start to add a, um, a uh, what did they call it, um, adversity score. So the students would not see the score, but the receiving colleges would. And it's based on 15 points of, like in this case, it would be noble students. And they look at factors of what the average income is in the town, in the district, what the crime rate is, what the, so not, it's not like, personal stuff about the student. It's about the environment of the school where they grew up. And this is obviously a way to try to combat some of the issues that are, you know, of elitism right now. And who knows it, what the, apparently they did a pilot program last year with um, 15 colleges and it went very well. And the colleges said um, that it was uh, extremely enlightening information and helped them um, in their selection process. And this, the colleges that they worked with were, you know, Yale to state schools. I didn't read all of them, but I just thought it was interesting. Um, you know, I guess I don't, I got the sense that it was being rolled out for like next year's admission, like pretty quickly. Yeah, that's, is this a <coughs> Lochner Law? I thought, no, no, that, that wasn't it. Never mind. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Cut just heard. Off. I just heard that on NPR on the way here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I just think it's it's inter It'll be. I don't know what the all the fifteen factors were, but um, it's. Uh, we could sitting right here. We could come up with twelve. Well, yeah. Easily. Right. And it, it's um it's it's been discussed for over a decade, and I didn't see the article. I knew the pilots were going on. I'm glad to hear that because it's. Uh, the greatest indicator of of uh, where schools fall on on the spec on the yeah. uh, on the graph is here's your socioeconomic status here's your here's your school performance it's it, it's a tremendously snug plot line yeah. going going up there line of best fit and so that's their idea about let's see if we can balance this out I had not heard how the pilot was going. So to hear this yeah. is very, I'm glad the, to see The it. article was, um, I guess the Wall Street Journal had um, sort of announced it and the College Board had not yet confirmed it, but I, I don't know why that would be, you know, a, yeah. an issue. So I thought it was interesting. Well, if you read it in the Wall Street Journal. It must be true. <laughs> it's probably true. Read it on the internet. <laughs> Definitely true. Everything's true on the internet. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have another. Um, what would the possibilities be of getting a code of conduct report we before have the end of the So we June. have one scheduled. Actually, I have an, an email draft set for you and Dustin because as the two board members, I wanted to have you join us. I met with the uh, administrative crew this afternoon to talk about it. And our plan is to, after the um, June 6th presentation from 6 to 8 that we have with um, Dr. Cassie Yackley on the trauma training. We're going to do a, a code of conduct update at that time. What do you guys? So I had trauma training on my calendar and I really didn't know what it was for. <laughs> so, so it's really you. just for, an information. I didn't even know if it was school board related. I yeah, didn't it was me. I had to, I had to, okay. <laughs> so that is actually um, a presentation by a woman that um, several of our administrators have seen already. Um, that just discusses, it's, it's really sort of the, the, the world that we live in today and how it's impacting us and how it's impacting schools. Um, so she's going to come and just kind of give an overview to the board um, because you don't always have the, um, you don't always get the chance to hear some of the stuff that, that we're hearing in terms of our training pieces. So Yeah, you hear the results helpful. of some things, yeah. but you don't yeah. And then know the code of conduct information. So I actually have an email out to you and Dustin about some specific um, things that I would that we're looking for in terms of questions. So we want the to trauma do. thing on that board meeting that night. Yep. That so is, that's scheduled that is, from six to eight. eight. It's for like the, a workshop. Well, it's a workshop. Are, there are three things because I need to talk with the board also about. Usually in June we have been doing one June meeting 
and then we go to a July meeting and an August meeting, which allows, and, and on the June meeting, the board authorizes the superintendent right. after that point, any hiring and so forth. Um, and then I update people on that in the July and August meetings. Um, the reason for doing that is because that last two week, that middle stretch to June and the end of June are just Crazy. murderers row nonstop for us at the office. We're closing out the 18-19 budget. We're starting the second budget, and that's that's just the financials, let alone everything else we, we have to take care of. So my request to the board is that we have a June 6th board meeting that does the workshop with her, that does the uh, follow-up, which I think is perfect timing on the um, what did you say? code of conduct. And then uh, there's also a matter of a person who's not here tonight that will be at that meeting that Okay. okay. Does that sound like a pretty good deal? So are you so saying that we would not have a second meeting in June? We would not have one on the 20th? Right. We'd have a, a workshop on, on the 6th, and then we'd have a, a followed by a board meeting because we'd want to so do some So long night on the 6th, and then that's it for... Yes. Yes, exactly. That's a good way to say it. Long night on the 6th. Okay. Um, what's the board's pleasure on that? So fun. Sounds fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you were telling us. Nope, I'm asking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, no, okay. it sounds fine. Sounds good. Okay, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy enough right now, let alone then. Anybody else? If you got spare time, you know, you can come over. I hear you're retiring, so you can come over and for what? pitch in. We'll find some things. Oh, I could mess things up really badly <laughs> for you. You might not want me. <laughs> you, did you already share that? Uh, we shared, somebody has the letter. Is it? Do we, okay. you people over here know that? Yeah, you okay. saw it, right? It's going all the way around. Okay, great. That's it. Anybody else have see? others? Yeah. You want to pass that back? That's just, it's about the SRTC um, oh, right. completion, okay. Okay. program completion. Anybody else have anything? Mr. Connor, do you have any others? I do not. Okay, then we go to our second public input session. Do we have any public input? Anybody think of anything? I just, I'm, I'm sending down an email. I mean, other people are being a little selfish. Mike, can you step up to this little <laughs> thing right here? Gonna... <laughs> it's worth it, I guess. This, this work. <laughs> Pull up a chair, Mike. Right. <clears throat> Not that, that one. Too long. <laughs> I'm, I'm just currently sending Diane Myers an email and just uh, thinking of the enjoyment that she's brought to our district and the kids. And we remember, I mean, my first year was mm -hmm. 90, and I remember Miss Myers just. That, that same attitude and enjoyment that every kid that came across her going to Miss Myers' classroom was always a good thing. Didn't matter if you were the rough, tough senior or the incoming freshman or back then if you had an A or a D minus or even an F. Miss Myers would take care of you and she would support you and she would never give up on you. And I'm just telling her an email that every educator should be Diane Myers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but anyway. It's a really nice thing to say. And she, I've seen pictures. She has not she changed. She doesn't look any different. No. What? Yeah. That's not fair. Okay. okay. Now, any other public input? And I think we're ready for number thirteen. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. so I second that. Uh, second was the. Second. All in favor? Captured Dustin's. Six oh, out. And I so uh, I would need a, so that's going to, we'll close out the time at the end of the meeting, but right now we would need a motion for someone to go into a 6405-6B uh, executive, uh, executive session. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? All right, and we'll move down to the uh, conference for that. Can